Thank you, Lord. Good morning. I pray this rainy Tuesday morning is a day that you are blessing the Lord and giving him all glory, all honor, all praise, that you are mindful to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Waiting for a few more people to join me. I know it was hard to get up, wasn't it? Particularly when you went to bed at like 2 o'clock. Like me. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Yvette. Evangelist. Good morning, Sean. Good morning, good morning, good morning to all those who are tuning in. We're talking about praise and worship this morning. What does it really mean? What does it really mean? What does it really mean? We're going to start in um, Psalms 151. Familiar passage, right, to everybody. And the word of the Lord is blessed. And so, God, we thank you for who you are this morning. We thank you that you allow us to enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. We thank you that you allow us to bless your holy name. We thank you for the right and the opportunity to worship you, to praise you, God, to present our lives as living sacrifices that can be holy and pleasing unto you, for this is our reasonable act of worship. Good morning, Lawrence. Good morning, Kenneth. Good morning, Brother Kurt. Hallelujah this morning. We thank you. We thank you for your word this morning. Well, hallelujah. Um, This is a um, topic. I love worship. I, I don't know. I often say I'm not a big praiser, right? But I love worship. I'm not uh, often exuberant in my praise, but I love worship. And even going over this uh, message, Psalms 50, 150, 150, 150. Um, even as... I started reading and studying about worship again last night. You know, one of those topics that is inexhaustible. <laughs> and just as I started reading it and studying again last night, I was reminded of several things about worship. And it just blessed my soul. So I pray, I pray that you all are blessed this morning as well. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power and praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounds of trumpets, with harps and with lyres. Praise, praise him with tri uh, trembles and dancing. Praise him with strings and pipes and praise him with cymbals. Praise him with the surrounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And the reason I opened this with uh, that particular text is because a lot of times I think as those in the pews and we pray those who are leading us in worship, I'm confident that they understand these differences. But when we talk about praising God, it says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord, right? So that can absolutely be anything. 
He said, if you don't praise me, the rocks are going to cry out and praise me. So praising God is for anything and everybody. The trees praise God when the wind blows through them. And so they, they wave their leaves and their limbs. The grass gives a recognition to God for his awesome ability to create, creating them from the beginnings of time. So everything can praise God. If you read my post, I said the prostitute will praise God. Yes, she will. Yes, she will. Hallelujah. Let her let the police roll by her and she not get stopped. What's she going to say? Thank you, Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. The drug dealer will praise the Lord. He didn't get busted. Thank you, Jesus. If he came up in church, that might bubble up out of his spirit. The person that is struggling with an addiction, they might say, praise the Lord. The pimp might si say, praise the Lord. Folk with, with um, how do I want to say it, Jesus? With a background, uh, undercover, I'll say it that way, undercover struggles will say, praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath, praise ye the Lord. Amen? So, Everything can praise the Lord. God created it that way. But only those who have a relationship with God can worship. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you cannot worship. So, so why do we praise God? I want to kind of lay a foundation for some things. Why do we praise God? We praise God because he deserves it. <laughs> It ain't deep. We praise him because he deserves it. Because all of the wonderful things that he has done for you and for me, we praise the Lord. We praise him because he's worthy to be praised. We praise him because we have thanksgiving in our heart. That's why we praise God. Because we, we thank him. We appreciate him. We, we extol him, his honor. Because of what he's done. Somebody passes you the salt at the dinner table. You say thank you. Because you appreciate that. Right? So you praise the Lord. You praise him with clappings. We've talked about even here on this these morning teachings. You demonstrate. Praise is a you demonstrate by sending up the smiley faces or uh, whatever the different emojis are. That's how you praise him. So that's how we connect with God and with each other uh, uh, during these morning teachings. So let everything that have breath praise the Lord because he is great. Psalms uh, 96 4 says because he is great. Because he is worthy of our praise. Because he is feared above all gods. So he's great. So we give him praise. We give him praise because he is worthy. His greatness is surpassing all things. Psalms 145, 3. So we praise him. Let everything that have breath this morning praise the Lord. Even where you are right now. Good morning, Rance. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Lewis. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So praise him right now. Praise him right now in your bedroom. Praise him right now while you're brushing your teeth. Give him thanks. Thank him, Brother Randy, for the things that he has done. Hallelujah. We give you praise right now, God. We bless your name. We lift up our hands because... We're grateful because we're thankful. We sing songs unto him because we're thankful. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. I want to tell you a little. It's not really funny. I guess it could be. When I had my dog, his name was Cain, right? His name was Cain, my nephew and nieces named him Cain. And <clears throat> they, um, my dog, this is the honest truth. When I would be in prayer, when I would be in prayer and I would lay pride, if I was praying and worshiping God, my dog would be right in the right, right there with me. Sometimes he would run around in a circle, probably chasing his tail, right? But he would praise God because I was clapping or I had my hands lifted. He would jump up on me. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, have you ever thought that a dog can smile? My dog, I felt like, would smile, right? He would. And so, but when, let's say I was in prayer. And 
I was giving, I was in, I was prostrate. My dog would literally lay right here, his nose to my face. Right, I wasn't the one to be letting my dog kiss me and stuff. But, hey amen, even though he was clean, come on. So that's just not what I did. But he would lay right here when I would be in prayer. But let me say this. This is where I'm going to switch up just for a second and talk about worship. When I would go into my prayer language, my dog would get up. He would go to the door and he would start scratching. Because he wanted to get out of there because he was like, I don't know that language. I don't know who she talking to. She ain't talking to me. And no dog would literally get up and whine and stand at my door for me to come out of my, my, my time of worship where I had quieted my natural spirit to let the spirit of the living God speak and pray through me. And my dog would want to get up out of there because I had gone into a place that he knew not of. Because I had gone into a place that only uh, is allowed for those who know him in spirit and in truth. I just dropped that right there. So, so praise. We praise him because he's worthy. We praise him because he's great. We praise him because uh, he has saved us. And so we are thankful for all the things that God has done. So this is why we praise him. We praise him. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. We praise him because he's worthy. The Lord is worthy of our praise to receive glory and honor. Hallelujah. To receive power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says in Revelation chapter 4 verse 11, For you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you have created all things. And they that were created from the beginning must praise you. This is why I tell people, I don't care where you're at in scripture, whether you're in Genesis, Revelation, Psalms, Proverbs, New Testament, Old Testament, it will come together. So in Revelations, it's saying, because all creation recognizes that they must praise you. And so we must acknowledge that God is worthy to be praised. And so when we praise God, we remind God that we know he's great. Because of who he is, we give him glory. Because of who he is, so we praise him by and rem, now this this might sound a little strange, but I need you to understand something. Praising God, it reminding him of his greatness. It's like why are you telling God he's great? Well, he knows he's great, but he needs to know that you know that he's great. Hallelujah. He needs to know that you know that you know that he's great. And so we praise him uh, recognizing that we know who he is and the attributes of him. And because of who he is, these are the things that he has done in our lives. Good morning, Brother Joe. Good morning, uh, Brother Saunders. So we praise and listen, I need you to hear this. We praise to exchange, um, how do I want to say this, Lord? Strength and faith. Our faith goes up to him in praise. and he, Our faith goes up to him in praise and he gives us strength. When I'm weak, I'm made strong because I praise God. I don't get stuck in my situation. Fearful because I'm worried. Because by faith, I continue to praise God. I let the grace of God, the understanding, joy of God, the peace of God lead me in to praise. Because had it not been for him, I wouldn't have breath. I wouldn't have sight. I wouldn't have use of those arms. I wouldn't have use of these feet. I wouldn't have use of these hands. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let every member of our body praise the Lord. Our eyes our nose, our mouth, our lips, our ears, our, our, our arms, our hands, our legs. Let everything, our feet that have breath, praise ye the Lord. I sent my nose and the Holy Spirit reminded me that when I was at my previous covering and I was the worship leader, not, you know, necessarily leading in song, but I was the worship leader. And in that position, there were times that I would smell God. 
I know that sounds crazy, but I did. And it was literally like I was in a building. And it was a it was a fragrance I cannot say. I really can't describe it. But that that fragrance would come in worship. I can't say it came in praise, but it would come in worship where I was totally immersing myself in giving God his worth and his value. Yeah, that's what it was. Giving God his worth and his value. It was almonds. It was like an almond and honey. I can't even describe it. At my current, uh, at, at the Streams Church, I would, uh, when we were over in um, the movie theater, I would smell the fresh air. It would be the crispest, most pure air. I, I, I it, it I, so those are my experiences of of experiencing God in worship. But let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord, and He will come in to your presence. When praises go up, the Bible says blessings come down. Isn't this what we teach people? Isn't this what we preach? And so uh, God, the Bible says, inhabits. He dwells. He enters in into the praises of his people. Now we know that all these scriptures are scriptures that you all have heard. And I'm asking you to stay with me because I'm going somewhere with this worship and praise. There is a difference. There is a difference. I opened up. By saying you have to have a personal relationship with God. You have to have God in you to worship. It's, to, to some degree, I might even say you need to um, have experienced God to worship. To give him worth and to give him value. Oh, we can thank him. We can thank him. Good morning, Brother Gill. We can thank him. But giving him worth and value, uh, you, you have to have a personal relationship with him. The Bible says in uh, John chapter 4, verse 22, But the hour is coming and has now arrived that true worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking those who worship. He's seeking those who worship him in this way. For God is spirit. The Bible also tells us that God is love. For God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Father. It says God is spirit. and But it also says in that same text, the Father is seeking such to worship him. Any man that's on here, and, and you're, you're a father, you love for your children to talk about what daddy said. The truth is, you love for your wife to do it too. And so to give you worth and to give you value. And so to say, I remember my uh, nephews, the twins, Jared and Gerard and Joshua, um, they they had, the twins had a room, and then I believe, did Joshua have his own room? He did. But he would... He would be in there with his big brothers. And uh, this was, they were really into to Spider-Man. And um, let's say something, they thought it was a monster, okay? Honey, daddy, come in, take care of them monsters. Because daddy, father, is able to come and step into a place that mommy can't. And so... Giving, yeah, daddy got him, daddy got him, daddy got him. Yeah, so they would give praise and worth to what daddy could do that mommy couldn't. So fathers welcome you to worship them. They do. We, we know that this isn't about how we worship God and stow worth and value to him. But in the natural, everybody does. But the Bible says the father seeks those to worship him in this way. And then it says God. So this is two different characteristics of God. It's his humanness that we can relate to as a father, but it's his holiness that we reverence as God. And so 
He is seeking, John chapter 4, verse 22. He's seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, this tells me that if you do not have the spirit of the living God, you cannot worship. If you do not understand who he is according to truth, you cannot worship him. If you do not know that he is the way, the truth, and the light, that he is life everlasting, if you do not understand these things and have an understanding of this, you cannot worship him. If you are in worship and your worries and your stresses, your angst, your strife, your bitterness, your unforgiveness, your anger, whatever it is, is before you, it blocks the flow of you being able to worship. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you are all caught up in your head or in your emotions and it ain't got nothing to do with God, you've placed whatever that is above him, it's going to be hard for you to worship. Because you got to worship him not only in the beauty of his holiness and entering and in his sanctuary, you have to worship him in spirit. You can praise him. This is why services wake up with praise and open up with praise and worship. We acknowledge him. We give him thanks. We do all of the outward demonstrations of I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. This is why even uh, in, in the um, Pentecostal church, the, before you would receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they would tell you to just start praising him. Because praise opens us up to worship. When we start thanking him and appreciating him, then something drops in us that we just say, God, you're holy. God, you're wonderful. God, you're awesome. I'm not asking you for a thing. I just know that if it had not been for you, I would be dead. I would have lost my mind. You are a keeper. You are a restorer. You are a way maker. Hallelujah. You are more than enough. You are all sufficient. Hallelujah. You are all wise. You are all knowing. Hallelujah, God. I thank you. Bless your name. And you'll go back and forth with, with praising him and worshiping them. But there comes a point in worship that you silence yourself. Because there's nothing else to say. Your spirit will take over, whether in your prayer language or in silence, because you recognize he's here. There's nothing. There's nothing for me to say. I silence my soul. I silence my mind. I silence my emotions. I silence what I want to let him have his way. Good morning, Sister Annette. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, so worship, interestingly, has a, a verb and it has a noun. Uh, by definition, uh, worship is to show him reverence. I would almost say, good morning, Brother Frank. I would almost say that worship and showing him reverence and adoration, recognizing his deity and honoring it, I would almost say that that could be a form of praise. I would almost say that. When we uh, outwardly demonstrate the actions of worship, it could also be, your act of worship could also be taking communion. Yeah. Your act of worship could be bowing down in reverence to him. When, when, this, when this verb of worship is enacted, your mind is always stayed on He's worthy. He's honored. He's holy. There's none like him. And so you take your shoes off in his presence because you are in the presence of the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Taking your shoes off or bowing down isn't praise. It's worship. Worship on your knees. Worship with your knees. So it's, it's our full body, presenting your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto him, because this is your reasonable act of worship. Yes, yes, Yvette, please tag someone, share this. 
Hallelujah. And so worship. I, I, yeah, let me, I'm going to wait. God, can I wait and say that? Okay, amen. Amen. Good morning, us, us Sister Al, Alexis. The noun, the noun of, of worship is, um, it's a feeling. You know, a noun, a person, place, or thing. It's a feeling. It's a feeling of adoration. It's, it's, it's the worship of God and God alone. I ain't worshiping my pastor. I'm not worshiping the worship leader. I ain't worshiping the musician. I'm not worshiping my husband. If you married, I'm not worshiping my spouse. If you're a child, I'm not worshiping my parents. I'm not worshiping my job, my car, my money. I recognize the supreme authority of God. And for that, I bow down. For that, I quiet my mind. For that, I say thank you, Jesus, for even allowing me to worship you. Oh God, you're worthy. You're worthy to be worshiped. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy. Worship is not the slow song. I mean, I'm, I'm rocking on Anita Baker for the last two weeks. Worship is not the slow song. Because if that's the case, worship could be the OJs. Worship could be the Whispers. Worship could be R. Kelly before he went crazy. So it's not, pray for him, so it's not the slow song. You, you don't, I know that we say praise and worship. Good morning, Sister Linda. I know that we say praise and worship, but I want you to hear me. Just because we go from high praise to worship songs, that are slow in tempo. That doesn't mean that you switched into worship. All you did, some of us, all we've done is just start singing a new song in a different way. Worship means that you reverence God. That there is a holy, godly fear of Him. It, it, is, it is when the presence of God walked in front of Moses and he had to turn his head. It's when you say, I'm not, I'm not even worthy to be in your presence, oh God. Why you choose me? It's recognizing and having a reverence and understanding his power and his deity. That's worship. Worship, praise is, is, a, is, a, is a spiritual discipline, but it let, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So everybody ain't praising him because they're coming from a place of, of spiritual discipline. But with worship, it's a spiritual discipline. The blessings of the Lord, as praises go up, blessings come down. But let me tell you something. I believe it is in worship that healing happens. It is in worship that the prophetic moves. It is in worship that God shows up and the prophetic tongue is released. With, with revelation and interpretation. It is in worship that people are baptized with the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. This is why true worship, that is true in its existence and in its demonstration and in its understanding, requires truth and our understanding of who God is and what he's able to do for you. Worship. Worship. Hallelujah. Worship him in spirit and in truth. I said it and I'm going to keep saying it. You cannot worship God without having the spirit of the living God in you. Indwelling and in filling you daily. It's not the praise team. It's not the pastors. It's not the intercessors. It's not the person that's reading scripture or praying in the morning. It is not their, re their responsibility. To fill us up. You can ask God daily. Fill me again. Baptize me again. I want a fresh encounter with you God. I want to see you in a new way. It is through your worship that that job is going to come. Good God Almighty. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. When you praise him. Praises go up. Blessings come down. Okay praise him. The job going to come down. But you know how you going to walk through the door? Worship. You know how you're going to get the job? The blessing going to come down because you're praising him and giving him thanks. 
that you got $84 in the bank, but you praise them in advance for the job that'll give you $8,000 in your bank account every month. Uh, hello, yeah. You're praising them that you got this little bit to tithe. It's still your 10th, but you're excited and you're giving them thanks in advance for the 10% that's going to multiply and come and come and come. So this is, this is, um, but how you going to get the job? How you going to keep the job? Hallelujah. It's the worship. Because you have to invoke the presence of the Lord in that job. Good God Almighty. In that interview. Oh, worship him. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Worship. 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 I said it when I opened up. I said it when I opened up, the prostitute will praise God. The pimp will praise God. The drug dealer will praise God. But they can't worship him until they understand this personal relationship. And that personal relationship brings conviction. Worship brings conviction. Worship makes you see yourself not only in the goodness of God, in how he sees you uh, as his creation. But it also helps us to see our frailties and our flaws. In comparison to his holiness. Which makes us want to change. Which makes us want to turn. Which makes us want to repent. There ain't no repentance and praise. You're too busy thanking God for all the things he's done. That's what you're being reminded of. Oh, but true worship. It'll make you put some stuff down, the Bible says, and at the altar and go and make it right with your brother. Because before you pray and before you start uh, beseeching God and the mercy seat, you want things right. Yes, it brings conviction to make things right with God and with man. That's what worship will do. Worship will change you, honey. Good God, worship will stop having you beat yourself up and beat everybody else up. Hallelujah. Worship will put grace in you and compassion in you. That's what grace will that, that's what worship will do. Worship will, will have you hate love your enemies. Worship will have you forgive folk. Your husband, your kids, your parents, your co-workers, your friends. That's what worship will do. Because in worship, you will start to realize how God has forgiven you. Oh, worship is useful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to compare, but for me, for me, worship is where I have to live. Worship will keep your mind. Worship will keep your mind stayed on him. That's what worship will do. Hallelujah. Worship. Worship will give you your mind back. Hallelujah. Worship will restore your soul. Worship will bring uh, the ministry of reconciliation. That's what worship will do. Oh, my God. I, I think I've said it before. When I was losing my mind, and I'm not trying to be funny, that's the truth. When I was suicidal, yeah. When I when I would say, Lord. Oh, shit. Hey, God, you ain't got to let me wake up. You ain't got to, you ain't got to just take me. Just see, I was a punk. I wasn't going to take no pills. I wasn't going to shoot myself. I wasn't going to stab myself. I wasn't going to do none of that. I wasn't going to run my car off a bridge. I wasn't going to do stuff. I just wanted God. I just want him to take me, take me in my sleep. That's that's where I was. That's that's where I was in, in in the state of my illness when I was first diagnosed with Graves' disease, which is a hormonal disease, and it just jacks up everything uh, about the balance of your hormones and and your feelings and your emotions. And so I was all over the place, and and it was worship. It was worship when I would have night terrors as an adult. Night terrors because. God was moving me into a place of ministry. Good morning, Dawn. God was moving me into a place of ministry and into my prophetic giftings and into a ministry of deliverance and into the ministry of declaring things and they happen. And the devil would come into my dreams. It was worship. Let me tell you something. Your kids having night terrors, put worship on. Have them sleep in their room with worship music playing. Thank you, Kurt Franklin. Amen. Thank you, Ty Tribbett. Amen. Thank you. But you need worship music. You need music that welcomes in the presence of God. See, the enemy, this is what you got to understand. The Bible refers to him that he had every instrument. Out of his lungs came the sound of every instrument. 
he could praise. Before his fall, he was could worship. But you, believer in Jesus Christ, you can worship. The devil can't worship. The devil don't know tongues either. This is why it's important that you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That you you got the you got the indwelling, but you because you received him as Savior and Lord, so you received his spirit. But you need the infilling with the evidence of speaking in tongues, not I'm not giving no more credit to speaking in tongues or praising in tongues or interpreting tongues than I do any other gift. But this is a gift that masks your prayers and your worship from the devil. Ah, who, who, who watched Star Trek? Any of y'all watch Star Trek? Okay, so remember the Klingons? The Klingons had an ability to cloak their ships. They could hide themselves from Captain Kirk and uh, uh, what was the name of that ship? I'm going to say Empire. Is that the name of it? Whatever it was. So so they could mask themselves from Captain Kirk and spot them, right? Because they had a way of cloaking, of, of, of making themselves go in. So God has given you that power in worship. Your praise, boisterous, everybody doing it. They running around. You don't know who who. Hallelujah. But in worship, the line get drawn. The bloodline is set. Hallelujah. In worship, you can go on up in Jesus. And you and, and in your prayer language, what you are talking between you and God, when you are worshiping God in your prayer language, worshiping him in spirit, from the spirit, through the spirit, by the spirit, because of this truth that you know who know who God is. And because of that, you can praise him. With your tongue. Good God Almighty. You can praise him with your prayer language. Good morning, Brother Paul. You can praise, you can worship him in a way that the enemy can't come in. N and neither you nor the enemy or anybody else around you knows what God is saying because your worship cloaks you. Mm, that's good. So, so he can't even mess with what you are talking to God about. He can't bring in doubt. Worship builds your confidence. Good God Almighty. Worship builds your confidence. Because you'll be like, now, this happens to me. I know I'm not the only one. I'll be like, now, where did I, where did I hear that at? Where did I? No, you didn't, you didn't hear it nowhere. The Spirit of the Lord told you it in prayer. Prayer is worship. Prayer is worship. Intercessory prayer is worship. It is the inter and authentic, yeah, no better experience. Good morning, Sister Hill. No better experience than a heart that's filled with worship. There's no better experience. There's no better experience. Worship, I said it already, is not the slow song. It's not the amount of times that you serve. Hallelujah. It, it, is, it is not... Uh, because you open the door. It's not because you're an usher. It's not because you're a minister. It's not because it's none of that. It's not because you're a prophet. It's not you because you're an elder. None of that has anything to do with worship. Worship has nothing to do with your service unto man. It is your service unto God. Oh my, I think the Lord just said something. So why are you serving? God rebuked me years ago and said, your faithfulness isn't unto Pastor A. Thomas Hill. Your faithfulness better be unto me. You better be faithful when he's around and when he's not around. When he's at church, when he's not at church. When he's in the sanctuary, when he's not in the sanctuary. Your worship better be unto me. Your birth, birth worship isn't unto any other spiritual father, any other spiritual mother. Your worship isn't unto anybody else in that church. Your worship better be unto me. Your faithfulness better be unto me. Because if not, you clanging cymbals. I don't even want to hear it. I don't want to hear nothing you talking about, little girl. I don't want to hear that. Keep that. You missing me. Because your motives are wrong. If your motive in praising God and worshiping God is to get the attention of someone else, that man on the other side of the sanctuary, good morning, uh, Brother Wayne. Good morning, uh, Sister Johnson. Yeah, if it's to uh, get the attention of somebody else, that ain't praise, and I'm helping you, it's showing worship. 
It ain't worship. Your worship is unto the Lord. It is with a clean. Who can enter his most holy temple? And a pure heart. Whose soul is not lifted up to vanity. Because everything about your worship is unto him. Everything about your work. Praise can be about everything else. Honey, we praise God. Thank you for my car. Thank you for my house. Thank you for my husband. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my kids. No, 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 no. Worship is only about him. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. We're giving him his worth and his value. His worth-ship. We're putting value on God. Hallelujah. Because of who he is, we give him glory. Because of who he is, we give him glory honor. Romans 12 reminds us that Paul said, I appeal to you. I appeal by the mercy of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God for this is your reasonable act of praise. No, your reasonable act of worship. Worship is a sacrifice. Worship is a sacrifice. You got to give up something to worship. You got to die to something. You got to die to yourself. You got to die to what you want. You got to die to your red bottoms. You got to die to your five-inch heels. Oh, they'll come off. You got to die to your white suit. You got to die to your white slacks, perfectly creased, brothers, and get on your knees. It's a sacrifice to worship. It's a sacrifice to come to the altar with everybody looking and you're the only one there. Oh, it's a sacrifice. He said, he said, to obey him is better than the sacrifice. There are times you're in, pre in the presence of the Lord, in worship, in, in your church, and the Lord tells you to get on your face, get on your knees, but because you want to look around and pay attention to what other folks are doing, you don't want to do it. Honey, boo. White suit, skirt, $400, whatever it is, on the floor. But let me say this. Somebody giving you a prophecy you will come up there and get that and they lay hands on you and you will hit the floor. Oh, when he tells you to bow down, <clears throat> go on down in it. Go on bow down. Because you'll hear things. Our pastor wrote a song that you've never heard. You'll see things that you've never seen when you go down, way down. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So worship, worship this morning. It's not lip service unto God. It's not lip service. It, it's a heart that is surrendered. It's a heart that is surrendered. Praise, let me say this. Praise is a joyful recounting. Yeah. Uh, you, it can intertwine itself with worship. Amen. Uh, praise is universal. Again, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. But because... Let me say, let me say, worship comes from a different place. It doesn't come uh, necessarily from our lips. It doesn't come from um, the outward demonstration, okay? And all of that is good. Amen, amen. Worship, worship, uh, worship comes from a different place because you reverence God. And as I already said, it's all about him. It, it, it's, 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 it's when you lose yourself. In his presence. When you, let me say this. You can go from praising God into worshiping God in a split second. You, I'm not talking about what the praise team do. Or you singing a song. But because you are praising him. And you are extolling him. And you are giving him adoration. And you are telling him how much you thank him. You can go straight in to worship. Where you just want to say, Lord, thank you. Your thank you can become worship because it can take you to a humble place. He draws close to the, those who are broken in spirit and of a broken and contrite, humbled heart that recognizes who he is, that acknowledges his truth. True worship of God, our self-worship, which is praise. True worship goes past how you feel. It goes above here it goes into the heavenlies where the angels stand over and say who is that worshiping our god is that yvette is that dawn is that paul who who is that giving him worth and value who just wants to sit 
I, when 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 God starts speaking to me, I tend to rock. I tend to rock. Okay, I just gave all y'all who go to church with me. When God starts speaking, whether he's speaking to me about me or speaking to me about someone else, I rock. When the word is good, when the word is preached and it's good or it's taught and it's good, I start to rock because my spirit starts moving. And, and I'm worshiping him on the inside. I might say that's good, but something else is happening on the inside. Hallelujah, that I'm, my spirit is agreeing with what's being preached, what's being sung, what's being taught, what he's saying. Worship puts you in a place that you can hear God. Good God Almighty. You can hear him speak to you and speak to you on the behalf of you and the behalf of other people. You can't hear God in worship and praise. I it's in worship. Aha! That you hear God. That you get the instruction. That you get the confidence. That you get the boldness. That truth falls into your innermost being. Oh, I'm wrapping up. I'm wrapping up. Worship. Worship. Is what, what is for the humble spirit. Because you, you've died to you. And what you want in that moment. Worship brings you into a place of humility. Worship brings you into a place of brokenness. Because you see yourself in the mirror of Christ. Good God Almighty. Worship. Let me say this. Worship is a lifestyle. Worship isn't just what you do at church. Worship is a lifestyle. Worship is... It's not an activity. It's a lifestyle. It's what we do giving worship, placing him as the head of our lives. Okay, okay, here we go. Um, <clears throat> confess him with your mouth and believe in your heart. Let me say this. You can't make God Lord. He cannot be Adonai in your life and, don't, and you don't worship. He's not Lord. He's not Lord. Everything that everything that he has saved, every, oh God, everything that he has created and everything that he has saved, whether you've confessed him or not, whether your family members have confessed him or not, they will praise God. We see children mimic their mama, their daddy, the pastor all the time. They ain't confessed Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. They certainly haven't made him Lord. They haven't made him Savior. They haven't made a choice to that. But they're saying, thank you, Jesus. They're saying, pray the Lord. They're saying it all. they saying, get thee behind me. Yeah, they saying all of that. They ain't saved, but he's created them. Remember, if you don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. Hallelujah. And I went to the Grand Canyon. And I remember standing on one of those cliffs. And I said, God, this is the simultaneous praise and worship. It is the praise because the rocks, the mountains are speaking and declaring his glory. How in the world was this created? Water? Water did this? Water. Water creates a canyon. Water constantly dripping on a rock will break up a rock there's a place in the Grand Caymans called the Black Islands the Black Island is where a volcano came down and covered that part of the island and when the when the fire settled the there were these boulders these black I mean this is a black that I've never seen it's not a place you would go to at night because it is absolutely scary it's the blackness of blackness Okay, because everything on that part of the island is black. You can't see where you're stepping. Your flashlights don't even work. But that is what God can do. And because of that, you stand in those places and you, you, you see his glory. You see his ultimate ability to create. Every time you look at yourself, you should worship God. Good God Almighty. The miracle of you, the miracle of you, Sister Grady, the miracle of you, Sister Abel, the miracle of you, the miracle of you, Beth, the miracle of my Jordan, who is the healed one, the miracle. 
Every time you look at yourself, you should worship God. Oh, praise him. God, I thank you. I thank you. My hair has grown. Hallelujah. I thank you for my nose. I thank you for my full lips. I thank you for my cheekbones. I thank you that I'm healthy. I thank you that I have life. Oh, but good God Almighty, when you worship him, you say, God, look at the majesty of your creation in me. And this majesty of your masterpiece, hallelujah, that you created in me, hallelujah. Yeah, praise will get you in the door. I keep telling you, but worship will keep you there. Worship has to become your breath. Worship has to become your life. Worship has to become your existence. Ha! Ah, worship him. Worship him in the beauty of holiness. Psalms 96.9. Worship him. Come let us worship him and bow down. Good God almighty. Ah, Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Listen, let me give you a difference and I'm going to get on up off of here. You can praise God and there be no worship in it. But you can worship God and there be praise in it. You can praise God and there is no worship. You're not giving him any worth. You're not giving him any value. But when you worship God, praise is intertwined in there. Hallelujah. Get to a point that, that you don't even start to recognize the difference. God just wants to stand up. Hallelujah, like he did with Stephen. He had to stand up. Jesus had to stand up. Good God Almighty, because your praise and your worship unto him is so pleasing. that he says, what can I do for her? What can I do for him? Good God Almighty, look how they're worshiping me. Look how they're praising me. Oh, let me say this. Good God Almighty, thank you, Jesus. Worst praise can be one voice, but worship becomes harmony. How can the two walk together unless they agree? But there you can walk together and not be in harmony. You can sing and not be in harmony. But when you worship, there's harmony. There's harmony. Good God Almighty, there's harmony. The blood of Jesus. So, so how do you get to a place that your attitude in your heart is worthy to enter his most holy temple to worship him? It's the blood. And I'm going to end right here. It's the blood. It's the blood that cleanses us and washes us. When you get a chance, I want you to read Psalms 51. It's the blood. It is the blood that washes us thoroughly. It's the blood. He said, cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. That's how you'll enter his most holy place. Lifting up holy hands. Bowing in reverence to him. It's, 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 let me see. Recognizing him in his beauty. And not for what he's done, but just for who he is. Because of who you are, God, I give you glory. Just for that alone. For nothing else. God wants your worship, but more than anything, he wants your praise. Make God stand up. Make him stand up. Make him stand up. Make him stand up because your praise and your worship unto him is so glorious. Make it. Make it glorious. Make it glorious this morning. Psalms 51 says, give me clean hands and a pure heart that I might worship you. God, this is my prayer for your sons and your daughters this morning. This is my prayer for my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is my prayer for me. Clean hands and a pure heart. Who can enter his most holy temple? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Whose soul is not lifted up unto vanity because it is not about them. It is all about you. God, we worship you this morning. We are going to change the atmosphere. We will not be glory stealers. Praisers, those who only praise God alone and don't know how to shift and move into worship, they're glory stealers. But when you know how to praise and worship, when your worship is full of praise, when your worship is all about God, you are giving God glory. And it's all about him. We will not be glory stealers. We will be the shifters of the atmosphere 
in our worship services because we will come in already full of the presence and the worship of our most holy God. We thank you, Daddy, and we love you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for uh, coming on and joining me this morning for Fourth Watch Power Prayer and Teaching. I pray that you heard something, that you learned something to encourage you, to strengthen you on your walk today and this week. The Lord says the same. We will be back together next week. For those of you who are interested in being a part of the prophetic training here in Indianapolis on September 1st, please worship. I mean, well, amen. Please register um, and... Um, Re uh, registration will open to everyone on tomorrow. Um, we opened it up for the first month for those who had who said they wanted to register first, and so we did that. So it will open uh, tomorrow for everyone who wants to be a part of that prophetic training. It is not a conference. It is a one-day training, and we are there to train you, to equip you, to speak into your life, and to impart into you and uh, to activate you. Now, this is not the laying on of hands to activate because that needs to come um, by the release and the approval of your overseer. If he is a man or woman who operates in, in, um, in the prophetic or is a prophet or apostle, that is his job. But our activation will be about helping you to see that you have the ability to speak words of knowledge, words of wisdom, and yea, even prophecy. So we are here to stir up your gift on September the 1st. So register, you will be fully equipped to understand what the prophetic looks like in this dispensation, how it is to be used, the order of it, the necessity of worship, the necessity of intercession, the necessity of um, prayer and the word in... Um, in the prophetic and uh, just the order of things, helping you to understand if you walk in the office of a prophet, what type of, which prophet are you? Minor and major ain't got nothing to do with it, but what type of prophet are you? I'm very clear of my prophetic um, uh, anointing in my prophetic office. Uh, who God, I, I'm, I'm more of an Isaiah. I tend to be very uh, strategic in my prophetic words and uh, how God uses me. They tend to be very detailed. I'm not the quick get in and get out. Uh, so there's, yeah, amen. Uh, some of y'all the weeping prophet, amen. I'm, I'm declaring, you know, yeah, we won't go there. So register. Thank you so much. The book release is September the 29th. Please order a copy from me or any of the authors the mornings after From Grief to Glory. It is going to bless you. The book is going to bless you. The stories of the authors are going to bless you. Stories of uh, the loss of loved ones by the hands of, of others, and that would be murder. Um, sudden death, sudden loss. Uh, parent, father, wonderful stories of, of people sharing about their relationship with their father. Um, it just It's just a beautiful, beautiful book. And again, Marvin Sapp, Pastor Marvin Sapp is doing uh, the forward in that book. And so again, order your copy. Um, and that will, that's on my page as well. If you are in the D.C. area, under the sound of my voice, on September the 22nd, I will be there uh, doing a relationship um discussion uh and the 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 plan is for it to go around the country so we're excited about that so um just um live out your hyphen allow god to use you in every way that he's created you he has anointed you to, for this for this and for that don't let people tell you to stay in your lane you only should be doing this you only should be doing that you let god use you and use you for his glory put down what you need to put down so you can pick up what you need to pick up and, and and move forward in that. And if it's one thing, if it's three things, you do what God has told you to do in all the way you give him worship. Because in your worship includes your praise. God bless you. I thank you so much for joining me. Lord says the same. We'll be together next week. God bless.